David says, I have a company that currently does not have two-factor authentication enabled. What will be the least disruptive way to enable it for them? One of my concerns is that a lot of folks may not remember their passwords. Really? Uh, if I enable 2FA, will they be able to use all of their apps or will they be forced to sign in after 2FA is enabled? Would the easiest thing to be to send a company-wide email with a link to the 2FA page for them to register and just deal with any forgotten passwords at that point? Thanks for the tips. <laughs> uh, I did a MFA rollout from an adoption perspective not that long ago. Um, and, you know, generally most organizations don't even do an adoption, like a full change, comms, training. They often yeah, don't even do deal that with as a program. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. It's like we're lighting it up um, and get started. And forgetting their passwords, oh, look, you'll get a certain percentage that, you know, might, but you can also enable them to do it themselves to fix it. Uh, so you can, you know, you don't have to manage it. But we found that we just did um, email going out that it was going to be turned on. This is the countdown for it. Uh, get yourself ready. Get yourself registered so you can go through that registration process to be ready. And then it was, you know, you either do it yourself or we will force you to in a week's time. So uh, they were pretty compliant as a rule and generally went in and got themselves set up and registered to do MFA. And then we ran a couple of webinars just walking them through you know, what is it on top of the email and the comms and a SharePoint, you know, intranet page on it and why we were doing it, the understanding of why and being secure and, you know, all the all the various factors of understanding. And then those seminars, they weren't hands on lessons or anything because it's not that complicated a feature ultimately um, to light up. So, yeah, a couple of seminars showing them the step by step and reiterating the messages of why. Most people were pretty good. Um, well, I think we're very used to it. We're doing our banking now with MFA, so we explained it like that. Do you know how you, when you go in, you do your banking, it kicks you off on your mobile phone, or you're going into any one of these other type of applications, whatever, you're used to doing this already. Mm -hmm. And so you'll, I think you'll find it's not as difficult as it seems. So, yeah. Mm. So I would take this, I know this is a whole, you know, I'm I'm uh, outnumbered by uh, M365 MVPs here and folks who love everything Office. Um, but the two-factor is different for different things. And one of the things that he mentions in the question is um, he doesn't even call out Office as the actual 2FA, right? Mm -hmm. And he's asking about, well, yeah, will 2FA work for all of their apps? It, it, it's a per app thing unless they use a simple uh, a central SAML provider like Okta. Okay, so Okta passes that 2FA information onto the application, uh, but that's a central point, right? Other, go ahead, Christian, you're going to say something? Oh, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, in some, uh, like uh, Gmail acts as that yeah, centralized yeah, location yeah, for some apps, yeah. depending on where you've enabled those profiles. Correct, correct. So right. what I'm getting at, though, is there's no one answer for this, right? Because, the, yeah. I mean, you could have apps that you have MFA and you have apps that don't have MFA, or you have apps that support uh, a specific kind of two-factor and others that only support one kind of two-factor. So you have to come up with a common thread, right? Because you want to use a, you know, to, for your two-factor, is it going to be a, 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 a phone-based app? Is it going to be a text message? Is it going to be a security questions? Um, what is your second factor of authentication? And again, other apps may not recognize those, right? So that's why they make things like Okta, you know, to, to do that front end for, you know, give you a nice front end and they do, they do all the back end dirty work, so. So if you, if you make a change within that you require for Microsoft 365 to have multi-factor authentication, then anything that ties to that profile when you're logging in will run through that process. Correct. So I've done that today, yeah, logged in there. It, but to your point is like, so things that I use that are outside of that, the right. purview of that core system that I've used signing up directly with that application, for my desktop or whatever will not be held to that. So there is no tie to it unless it's tied to that well, M365 profile. 
Well, and what you're seeing now is you're seeing a lot of, of sites because Microsoft, Google, Facebook, um, you know, LinkedIn, they've opened up their APIs for authentication. So now you can go into like different websites and you can select which authentication provider you want to use or use your own email address, right? Um, but they're, they opened up the API so you can do that. Then you kind of got a centralized, you know, 2FA authentication. The problem is, is that, again, that's dependent on the app. And it's only really SaaS apps that, that offer that, right? right? So you have, you know, finance might have these apps from the 1990s that, you know, they just don't do, they don't even know what multi-factor means. You know, it's not even spelled out a language. So um, those are all things you have to look at. We have no idea from, from his question, I mean, what we're mm -hmm. dealing with. Um, so it could be, it could be a lot of things. Indeed. And I know about you, Christian, but I've got so many organizations on my mobile that I'll be working with. And some of them have, I've got one at the moment that's literally just about bricked my mobile. I cannot do anything, anything outside of, like I can't get something from my own personal mail over to my own personal OneNote because they've got restrictions and they do that take control of your mobile phone and only one can do it at a time. And with all that multi-factor authentication and things, and they're trying to log in every day. They're not doing the once a week. It's every day you have to put in the full password and it can't be remembered. And it's like sometimes it can be really overwhelming for an end user. So on some of that, can you remember or not? Well, it comes down to how hard you go because everything can be so very layered when yeah. it comes to MFA. What's well, so, you know I've become a big fan of for that for that reason that complexity of using the Authenticator app to be able to hand that so that it, it so it's code driven so log in there I go in there because I I mean I worked in security well, it is using the authentic it is using the Authenticator app but it's harsh 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 yeah no, and mm. and I get that like, but I, I like I remember back in my data center um, days carrying around the little the the, the little key fob that had you know, the yeah. password generator yeah, the code right. to get in the there, RSA, like all that stuff. RSA yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So um, just dating ourselves here. Um, I know. <laughs> but yeah, so that was in the early 90s. Um, not that far solution from, to that. Not far not from, far. Uh, uh, not far from the, the app you use today. Microsoft right. Authenticator gives you six digits. Yep. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And yep. that's the same thing that the little RSA key would give yep. you, you know, that little token yep. thing. Um, yeah. So it's it's not far from that. <laughs> I, I want so, thing I would oh, go ahead, Norm. Yeah, I was going to say the the overarching thing about all of this. If, if David is happening to to be watching this uh, this video, is that you're getting two very extremes of the of the response. Uh, Mike has gone down to say, you know, it, it can be very technical. It, it's going to depend, and you're going to have to invest a lot of work for your particular scenario. Christy and Christy and uh, and Christian have also talked about the the effect on the the user side. You're going to have to put in just as much time with change management, adoption, getting your users ready for MFA, and all of those implications than you are on the technical side. And that should not be underestimated. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're we're talking about those those password generator key fobby things that Christian was talking about. You know, like you're going to have all these sundry issues that show up, like people not wanting to use their own devices My if they don't have a corporate one. Or you know, yeah. afraid of the big brother aspect of all of it, and people are going to forget. It's yeah. so easy for us as you know, IT people, to uh, to underestimate how big of an impact something like this is. But oddly, yeah, oddly enough, I want to give you an example. Is I ran across not too long ago, is a very small company, two two hundred. I think it was two hundred and twenty some employees, two hundred employees. Um, they were implementing two factor right across the board. Um, but they were implementing the uh, Windows Hello because they didn't have any Macs or an all Windows shop um, and they were using Windows Hello. They actually had employees that would not enroll in the Windows yeah. Hello because yes, they, didn't want their, they didn't want their biometrics um, mm -hmm. collected and they actually didn't have to do it. The company backed off because the employees said they were going to, you know, sue the company so, and all this yeah. other kind of stuff. Yeah. But you have got that exact thing face. at the moment, Mike. Yeah. They didn't want all that. 
Yeah. I, I was yeah, just going to. We helped them to. Sorry, Christian. We helped yeah. them explain on that one, Mike, just recently that it's really they're not actually doing full face. It's just pinpoints on the face. It's held in the chip on the laptop. We're trying to on a change piece right now that it's you know it's not actually and it's left only to the computer. Microsoft doesn't have it. The organization doesn't have it. If you your PC dies, you got to do it all over again, and it's yours Boy, effectively. Yeah, Kirsty, so, you, you know, bought yeah. right into the big government lines. How they yeah, how they yeah. reel you in. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. I, can but I, you know can what? I, it is. We're talking about end users, and they do sure. panic. And and same with Mike said, and they don't want to do it, or they don't want the authenticator app on their mobile. And but yeah. then they want to use their email. But then if they can't remember, and it's their email they're trying to get into, and they're trying to do multi-factor authentication, yeah. then they're, they're, they've got no don't other say, ways. Like, so. so something on that point though is just you have to remember when you're talking about your company, it's like it's not your system. It's the company system. If you and want to work there here, are then. security risks that are getting mm -hmm. uh, increasingly important every day. Yes. Like phishing is off the hook. It's just it's so yeah. prevalent now. And and all of these these risks that are out there and they, it needs to be locked down. And not to pile more on David, but that the, if you're concerned that people aren't going to remember their passwords, I, I'll wager that your organization has a very unhealthy unhealthy password system and that you should be re forced renewal of passwords a minimum of every 90 days that's just the reality that we're in no, no that that doesn't work because then they got to change the post-it note that's sitting on their monitor because you know, <laughs> cross off the old one, pad, right? <laughs> that's right. it's, stationary fun for that. it's in yeah. notepad it's not physically come on we're not animals here it's written in notepad on a file that's on the digital desktop it's underneath the keyboard they hide it like the, the key your house that's right no one's gonna look there yeah they, they look at it they'll never look at it <laughs> Yeah. But that is that is a user behavior, and these are all things that I regularly have to talk to them about. Um, and then even just pin recently, you know, you do the the you can do the pin quick easy pin on a surface, and then they've gone no, but we want to actually include one uppercase or lowercase um, uh, alphabet, and I'm going, but then you've no longer got a pin. They ma yeah. so the moment you do that, you open up. Just they're just going to do exactly the same password yeah. as their PC to remember it because to have a password and then a pin that's like a password, you're better off to have a four or a six digit. It's proven that it's more secure than to. That's why I stick with my mm. my home system. It's pretty secure. It, I have Windows Hello. I have the pin, and then it accepts either blood or urine samples. So <laughs> it's it's good. Okay, I regularly moving on. bleed. Moving I regularly on. bleed from my work and from Microsoft. <laughs> what you know? It's like, <laughs> uh, uh, look, but yeah, um, multi-factor is not easy. And as you said, Mike, there's so many ways and so many things, and it can stop you from doing or single sign on and having to do it again and again and oh, again yeah. and if they're doing it again and again they're going to remember their password there is that but um <laughs> remember your password people remember your yeah. password